Hello and welcome to the Hoosier Football Tailgate here on the Believe Network. It's Monday and it's time to recap the tough loss the Hoosiers had on Saturday to Louisville 21 to 14. It was a tale of two halves as the Hoosiers rally in the second half but got off to a very poor start on both sides of the ball Saturday and some of the issues that we've seen in the past a uh, couple weeks have kind of reared its ugly head again and we'll get into that in a little bit uh just a couple things here for you um if you're catching this via youtube give that uh, uh subscribe button a smash and also the notification bell so you can be notified when i drop my videos i try to drop them on monday and thursdays also if you are watching via twitter or uh facebook same thing give us a like and a follow and a share help me out to get the word out about this uh new uh venture that i have going on with the believe network covering the hoosiers trying to give you a different perspective uh maybe than some of the other uh individuals out there are doing giving you maybe a perspective from a coach's point of view but if you could do that i appreciate it uh but tonight here or we're going to discuss a little bit of the offensive defensive and special teams that occurred on saturday afternoon down in lucas oil stadium in a game that uh i guess you could say outside of that first half uh really brought some uh excitement uh for those that may have stu uh, that those that stood around uh, stayed around for that second half, uh, saw some really good football in that second half on, on Saturday from the Hoosiers. But offensively, I think the biggest thing that hurt the Hoosiers again was the slow start and inability to get into any type of rhythm offensively. Um, you know, I've seen some people say that that was too conservative or this or that. And, you know, the really, they were just stopping themselves on the drives. I mean, they had a couple times uh, of getting some drive going, uh, drives going ex like on that first drive of the game, but they were just uh, not doing very good and getting themselves uh, first downs. And a lot of that, again, um, was their inability on third downs uh, to get themselves in, in, in a position to, have manageable third downs and countless times on Saturday, they just uh, didn't have it uh, there uh, with the third downs again, five of 13 on Saturday. And um, I've alluded to this before. I'm not, I don't care who you are or what type of coach you are or what talent you have uh, to think that you are going to consistently convert third down and seven, third down and 10, third down and 12 uh, in a college football game, uh, you're kidding yourself. It just, it, it's just not going to happen. Um, most of the time you may get one or two of those calls correct, but the majority of them you're not in, in it's going to cause problems for you as a football team, as it did on Saturday for IU. Running the ball, again, still a huge issue. They only had 58 yards of net rushing the entire game. Jalen Lucas was the leading rusher by three yards over Henderson at 29. Henderson had 26. Um, this is a scenario, again, that just goes right back to the ineffectiveness of offensive line play. And um, there were some bright spots at times during Saturday's game, but it's just not a consistent product right now. And some of the new faces along the offensive line are still growing up. And uh, IU is going to have to keep pounding away at it because um, they've got to be able to run the football. And if they can't run it and become a one-dimensional team, I don't think you're going to find the season that you would like to have uh, from Indiana this year. Um, because of their inability right now to establish any type of a run game. Uh, what that is, I can't sit here and give you a full rundown of what the answers are uh, for Indiana. It may be that they're going to have to utilize some more quarterback run or quarterback design runs. Maybe they're going to have to spread it out more and uh, try to open up run lanes that way. Um, you know, some people have a feeling to think that the run game 
or the pass game can set up the run game. And that's probably true in some instances. Um, but uh, Indiana still has to be able to run the football with some consistency. And like I said, with the third downs, the way their their conversion rates going right now, it's just, it's just not uh, effective enough. And if you look at it from the perspective, uh efficiency aspect of things it goes right back to first and second down efficiency and they're just not getting it uh on either run or pass in some respects so uh definitely some things that they got to do there i thought Taven's start uh his second start of the year his first true start with that qb1 rating i thought he started a little bit shaky um, and I mean that I thought some of his balls were sailing on him and his throws, but it's once he got his feet underneath him and he kind of got himself into that mindset of being the guy, I thought you really saw what Taven Jackson brings to the table, especially throwing the ball. And he's an athletic enough kid that he can run it too. But um, he was dynamite in, in this game, especially throughout that second half. And, I thought he did a good job in the leadership department. I thought he took control of the huddle. Um, you know, in, in that respect, he's still got a long ways to go. Uh, I think he's got to mature some with his leadership ability. But 24-34, only one interception, 299 yards on the day, one touchdown um, uh, pass uh, on the day. His longest pass was 41 yards. But um, – Again, I think you saw some some peaks at what he can do as that QB one uh, at that QB one position. So a lot a lot of cautious optimism. Um, but I think if we can get the guys to grow around him and he can make those around him better, whether it be up front, whether it be wide receivers or running backs. Um, that's going to be a huge benefit for them. I talked about the rushing game. You know, Lucas and Henderson were most the two most uh, carries on the game with a total of 15 between the two. Christian Turner got a couple uh, carries on the day. Um, you know, I think they're really going to have to develop their depth there um, and get some guys in the swing of things uh outside of utilizing the top two guys but they're going to have to find who that third guy is as they progress through the season because they're going to need him now on the receiving side Jalen lucas he was also the number one target he had 12 targeted throws on saturday 10 receptions 98 yards 70 yards of yak yards out of and 138 total yak yards which was pretty good for the indiana on the day, then McCauley was your second re receiver with eight targets, four receptions. Cam Camper, three re three receptions, 74 uh, yards. Of course, that one was a 41-yard uh, throw from Taven during the game. Uh, Jalen had the one touchdown catch. That was, a, uh, I believe, 30 yards. Uh, but the other surprise on Saturday was uh, Archer getting some targets as well and you know developing that tight end position is is critical as well because you can utilize those guys in so many different ways off the run game once that gets established and then utilize them running routes and stuff but i thought he had one tremendous catch it was unbelievable um and then the only one thing that i would say i was a little bit disappointed in only uh omar cooper only having one one targeted throw on the day he only had one reception eight yards here's a guy coming off a hundred yard a hundred yard game and only to get the ball one time on saturday that's a little disappointing there needs to be some more effort in targeting uh him uh, as well now may have that been mostly louisville uh coverage of him and the second thing is maybe he wasn't just you know getting open like he was against indiana state so but i think there's got to be some more design plays that puts him in that first read opportunity because he's too good of a wide out not to have some opportunities with the ball in his hands but uh see i think they did a great job with jalen uh, he had eight rushes. He had tw 10 receptions, a pretty balanced day. Uh, he gives you the ability to get in some two back stuff. 
and then one back stuff without even changing your personnel, which I think is important for Indiana. So I thought that was a good plan there. It's just getting maybe uh, Omar some more opportunities there when it comes to targeting uh, the throws. Second half of the game, again, so much better. Uh, and I think a lot of that alluded to how they started the second half and then the, the offense carried that, you know, captured that momentum. Um, you know, the Indiana finishes up with 357 total yards. Again, 58 of that was rushing, uh, which isn't very good. If they can find 100 yards and take a 300-yard passing game with a 150-yard rush game, you got something. And, and, and so why you feel like you're so far away in that regard, you're not that far away. And that's why I mean, you got to keep pounding at it to, uh, to get that uh, momentum going up front and mentality up front uh, so that they can, you know, find that additional hundred yards or 70 yards, because then it's going to give you more yardage per game, which should lead to more opportunities to score. Um, but I thought the second half was, a, you know, a good, good, you know, solid, uh, performance. The first half was not, and, uh, that inconsistency is not going to win you much football games. You got to find that consistency as well. But, you know, I said Louisville's defense was going to be physical. They were, they were strong up front. I thought they dominated the line of scrimmage for the better part of the day. Um, against uh, Indiana, it was probably, uh, you know, they were as good up front probably as what Ohio State brought to the table uh, in the sense of their front four, uh, you know, being strong and fast. So uh, it was a pretty dominant performance by Louisville's defense there in that first half, uh, like I said. And But it was a much better second half by Indiana, so whatever adjustments they made, whatever words were utilized in the locker room at halftime, uh, I thought they had a good plan and executed it pretty well in that second half. Defense, same thing. A very, very bad first half for an Indiana defense. That's very unlikely, was very unlike them uh, on Saturday, at least of what they had put on tape in the first two weeks. Um but they just did not uh, kind of rise to the occasion against an offense that had a lot of balance. I said before the game, the one thing that Jeff Brom had that he didn't have at, at Purdue, he had a rushing game to go along with his passing game. And that makes that team a very dangerous team. And they will be in the ACC as well because Brom's got a running game on top of what he can do with Plummer throwing the football and some good guys around him. So um, IU was not very good in the first half. There were some communication errors that in the secondary that led to that first touchdown by thrash of 85 yards for the big hit um, too many big plays on Saturday, especially in the first half. I think they had seven plays or more over 15 yards uh, in that first half, whether it be a run or pass. So that's too many. Um, they gave up over 300 yards in the first half. Again, uh, very concerned in that regard because that was not what IU had shown in the first two, <clears throat> first two or three games, first two games of the year, giving up that much offense uh, to an oppose, opposing offense was not like IU and uh, most of that was through big plays. And that's what will get you hurt and beat real quick is when you start giving up cheap big plays. And I know they had some secondary issues, new faces back there. Um, but um, you flip the switch in the second half and so much better. And whatever the whatever those adjustments were, uh, that was a great job by the IU defensive coaches uh, to come together and make some changes, maybe a wrinkle here or there that enabled them to have the second half they did because they only gave up 122 yards in that second half, I believe. Held Louisville to, I think Louisville was only um, seven of, 
I think they were like seven of 12 on third downs. So not overly bad. Um, they had the one, they got the pick as well. Um, but the second half was night and day. Um, you know, Casey, I thought had a pretty decent game. He ended up with 10 tackles. Again, he's showing that he can be a premier top linebacker within the big 10. Now he did some things in that first quarter, first half that got him out of gaps a couple times, but overall 10 tackles on the day Moore had nine tackles. So I thought a lot it was good to see Dunham had seven. The one player defensively that I was a little surprised with was Carter. Now there could be a several reasons to that. One of them was Louisville was really, um, not giving him too many opportunities to uh, blow things up by running away from him and, you know, making sure he was accounted for each and every play. But I thought he had to be a little bit more disruptive, especially in the past game against a uh, And it just didn't, just didn't happen in that regard. But as a whole, the second half was a complete turnaround from the first half. And, uh, I think leading into the the solid special teams play that happened Saturday, uh, I thought was it was a critical component too because if you remember I saying that IU has to find to win the special teams battle the hidden yardage, which I believe they did on Saturday. You know they come out when you're down 21, you've got to find ways to steal a possession or two, and they did that. They come out with the big onside kick. They get it. They get down the field and score. Um, defense did a great job of getting some three and outs and, and creating some field position that enabled Indiana to get themselves back in the ball game, giving them the chance to do what they needed to do. And uh, special teams played a big part of that on Saturday. I, I think IU had two or three times where they punted Louisville inside their 10 and inside their 20. I don't know how many times they did that on Saturday. It was at least twice um, that I know of, but uh, pretty good day. I know they, um, yeah, they had it twice on Saturday. Um, so a pretty good job by the special teams overall, especially getting that surprise onside kick that led to, uh, IU getting their first score and getting back in the game. That 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 play alone changed the whole complexion of that ball game. It changed it from a very bleak, uh, you know, first half to a very opter, uh, you know, opportunistic second half, and gave some optimism by doing that. That just com- changed completely uh, the complexion of that ball game. So. I thought the special teams did what they needed to do Saturday to give themselves a chance to win. You know, if I had to look back at it, a couple things that I, you know, yak yards for the defense in terms of yards after catch, they yielded 118. Um, Not too bad on the day, but, you know, you you really want to minimize those yardage uh, with that. And then, of course, the, the running game consistency has to, uh, continue to uh, strive to get better in that regard because when they get into the Big Ten play, they're going to have to have some consistency there in the running game. Now, what is that? I, I can't sit here and put my finger on it and say, hey, if they did this or did that, it'd be one thing. Uh, they're just going to have to look at what maybe gives them a better chance to open some run lanes uh, for them. Maybe it's spreading it more and trying to do things that way but you know uh but they got to keep pounding away at it i know a lot of people pointed to the fourth down call um hindsight being what it is we all would have wished we would have done this done something differently but when you're inside the two yard line or one yard line or whatever that was i think it was a less than a yard maybe you got to be able to line up and go right downhill and get the yardage. Now I know against IU, IU's offense being that it was, they haven't been in that position that much, not only this year, but in a lot of years. And uh, that's an attitude. That's an attitude that they're going to have to find a way to capture and get, but there's no excuse to get beat off the ball and give up the penetration they did again on the offensive line. 
uh, to Louisville on Saturday. That's what stopped the play. It wasn't the play call. The, the, the play was stopped because Louisville exploded off the ball and Indiana was not uh, ready or good enough yet to uh, match that physicality in that area. And when you get penetration, I don't care what play you run, it's going to blow up. And that's what it did. Henderson didn't even have a chance at it. Now, like I said, I would have loved to seen a boot off of that, like a naked boot and, you know, really sell out the run and let Jalen walk it into the end zone potentially, or some type of hard play action pass, or maybe you spread it out there. But at some point when you're inside the one yard line, you got to be able to line up and play a little smash mouth football and get the ball in the end zone. Just got to. And in the big 10, that's what they do. Uh, so uh, they've got to learn that that's a mentality. It will come. It may not come as fast as you want it to come, but it's going to come there. I was pleased to see them try to run power football there because that's what I think you have to do by blocking down and pulling around and kicking out because that should help eliminate some of those potential penetrations uh, by blocking down and back. But, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, hey, didn't work. You got to re rebound from there. And if, you know, try to get the ball back. But unfortunately, they were unable to. And it led to the 21 to 14 loss for the Hoosiers one and two. You got Akron coming in thir uh, Saturday into uh, Bloomington. It, you know, I hate to say must wins, but it's a must win. Uh, quite honestly, if you want to have happen what you want, you know, go to a potential bowl game. This game is a game that you got to have. Um, had they beaten Louisville, I looked at that one as kind of having one in hand. Um, but that one's over. You got Akron on on Saturday, and that's a must win for Indiana. I'll have more on that on Thursday where we'll look at Akron a little bit more in depth. Uh, I know that they played Kentucky, I believe, on Saturday, and Kentucky took uh, pretty much advantage of, of Akron, who's also in a rebuild. But I want to thank you for joining me here tonight on uh, Hoosier Football Tailgate here on the Believe Network. I am the coach, Shannon Griffith, and we'll see you Thursday right here on Hoosier Football Tailgate on the Believe Network. Good night, everybody.